What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to another episode of Ben Bills with Joe. We're back on the bench, guys, with another episode for our 109. This is a Tamiya 148 scale kit, and I'm really excited to go ahead and see what we can do today to get this thing closer to being finished. So we're going to go ahead and focus today on priming, and then we're going to start painting, meaning I want to go ahead and do the light blue on the bottom of the wings and the sides and bottom of fuselage. I think that's going to be a really good place to start today. But of course, we do have to go ahead and prime, and we need to go ahead and cover up that cockpit so we don't get paint all inside our night's work. Also, there's a couple of seams here we want to go ahead and just kind of diminish. I've got some Mr. Surfacer 1200 for that, and we're going to take a toothpick. We're going to dip it into the Mr. Surfacer, and then we're just going to go ahead and dab it around the different panel lines. I don't want to necessarily remove. I just want to go ahead and lessen them so they're not so prominent. The nice thing about the 109 is that they have panel lines in different areas that normally you'd file everything down. In this case, we leave them. So that's really nice. I just want to make sure they're not so prominent. Now, after we have everything kind of down here on the model, in terms of putty, we're going to go ahead and take some acetone, or in this case, regular old fingernail polish remover. Now we're going to dip it in a Q-tip, and then we're going to wipe off all the excess putty. I've done this before, and it usually works pretty well. It also reduces the amount of time you have to spend sanding and letting the putty cure and all that stuff, because this kind of liquefies the putty, gets it where it needs to go, and then we just go ahead and wipe off the excess. We don't have to do a lot of work, such as sanding and all that. So that's really, really helpful. Also, nice thing, like I said about this 109, is that panel lines have been very, very minimal. The fit is excellent on this kit. And I got to say, if you guys like World War II aircraft and you like German aircraft, you haven't built this one yet, try it out. It's a lot of fun. So now that we have the panel lines more or less taken care of with our putty, now we're going to go ahead and turn our attention over to the tail. want to go ahead and assemble those rear ailerons, get those supports in, and then we're going to prime and we're going to start painting. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm very excited about this. So let's go ahead and queue up that time lapse. We're going to push forward, get all this stuff nicely squared away, install that rear tail, and see where we go from there.
All right, everybody, we are back. And as you can see, we have our 109 all nicely appreciated. We also overcoated everything with that Stano Reds primer. I love that stuff. And we are looking really, really top flight here to go ahead and start doing the painting. I'm very interested in trying out a different technique. So what I did is I went out and I picked up these. And these are basically just airbrush templates. They aren't necessarily as robust as you would get, say, from uh, some of the other companies. They aren't photo etched. They are cardboard. But here is my plan. I'm going to take Pale Blue by Baleo, and we're going to pick a certain section here on the template. And we're going to go ahead and airbrush through the template to leave random discolorations on the wing. This is a very similar thing to like a marble coat, but we're not really doing black basing. I just wanted to try it out and see where we go. So I'm going to go ahead and select one of these templates, and we're going to load up our airbrush, and we're going to push forward and try to get some of these random different shapes and colors here on the bottom of the wing. Now, my whole idea here, though, is once this is done, it will be a little bit more along the lines of a marble coat so that I can take a very thinned out version of the actual blue color and we can airbrush over all of this and kind of fade everything together, keeping the panel shading that we've done and also keeping all the new additions of all those little marks and whatnot. So let's go ahead and give it a shot, see what we can do. And fingers crossed, this turns out. All right, everybody, we are back, and that was a very interesting process. I had a lot of fun with that one. Using the templates to give us a little bit of a marbling coat was super simple. And again, I needed to go ahead and do a little bit more work with it, and I need to figure out how much to go ahead and leave through the top cover of paint and how little or how maybe how dark of a paint to use. But I think it looks pretty decent. Again, I'm not going to go super heavy with that on the bottom side of the wings because you're not really going to get a lot of sun bleaching and paint fading. You're going to get more of the chips from rocks, and you're going to get some of the dust kicked up from the landing fields in North Africa. So that's kind of what I figured I would do. So I kept the random stenciling a little bit on the light side, just to give some subtle shading, but not to be too stark. I think it looks pretty decent. You can kind of see that through different lights, but it's a little bit difficult on camera. But trust me, they are there. They are just very subtle. Now, next episode, we're going to go ahead and work on the top colors, and that's going to be this kind of tannish brown color, this desert tan. That's going to be the majority of the top wings and then the top of the rear tail and then, of course, the fuselage itself. And then we're going to be using some of the dark green. Go ahead and put splotches all over this section here. That's actually a really nice color, and I'm excited to go ahead and see how that works through the airbrush. 
And of course, we have all the detailed painting to do as well, such as the inside of the flap areas here. And of course, the wheel wells, that's going to be RLM02. So we've got that set aside as well. And I think this kit is really starting to take shape. So I'm excited to see how it ends up turning out. Also, I got to tell you, the templates that I picked up off of Amazon, they do work. They have three different versions, and I only use the one, but I have two additional ones that I might try next episode. We're going to go a little heavier with the stenciling next time because I want to go ahead and weather this down a little bit more than the underside of the aircraft. But these are kind of neat. If you're interested in trying this technique, these are, I think, for 18 bucks online on Amazon, and they honestly work pretty well. I don't know about long-term usage because they are some sort of thin, almost like a cardboard card material, and they are overcoated, though. So, well, we'll have to see how it goes. But anyway, guys, until next episode, you know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool. Make sure to stop on by Joe's channel, tell him Ben sent you. We'll go ahead and see you back here next episode for Ben Builds with Joe. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you soon. Thank you.